Uh, but for now, today we're doing um, we're doing Eden and talking about the story. So uh, I think first off, we can start we can start talking about the story for Shadowbringers because obviously that's like the biggest thing what I want to do first. Um, but honestly, it's hard to talk about the story without talking about the end of Stormblood. Because other than like the, I feel like the the end of Stormblood story kind of went into two separate parts. It went into went into the the war with the Garleans, and then also went into prep, part of preparation for Shadowbringers. What with like our uh, I wouldn't say party members, our friends, or whatever, passing out and what in the Exarch talking to us. And because I remember, I remember uh, when that first happened. And like all the stuff, seeing all the stuff happen, I was like super invested, and I wanted to like see and know what happened next because it was super super interesting. And eventually, we wrapped up the dungeon. I believe it was this dungeon right here, um, this one. So yeah, and then after that, we pretty much got right into it and put us into this world. And immediately, I noticed that the I don't know, the, the setting was different. It was a lot darker. Like, not like dark as in like shading dark. Dark as in like story dark. Like, things suck. Everything sucks around here. And the stakes were much higher than like Heaven's Word or Stormblood, for example. Because the stakes were still high in those expansions, but this was like the, like the entire like universe was in danger here. So shit was, shit was real, I guess you could say. And... Yeah, we we got like introduced to the world. We noticed like it, the world like ended kind of. Uh, there was light everywhere. These like light zombies, the sin eaters, that were like killing people, terrorizing people, and this light. And the Crystarium here was pretty much the only safe haven in the world left, other than other than Eelmore, which we eventually meet. Because when we get to the crystal, when we get to here. We talk to the Exarch, he sends, off, he sends us off in two paths to talk with either uh, Alzheimer or Alpha Node. And I think both of those quest lines do a good job establishing the world and showing you what the people in the world are dealing with. With like, I don't know, like struggling to survive and trying to get to safety or dealing with dying to city eaters and whatnot. So those two quest lines set up a, set up a lot of like world building. I really enjoyed it for how like how dark it was. I don't know. I enjoyed the darkness of it. Like, I don't know. I, I, I'm a big fan of, of 40k, so I enjoy like grim dark stuff. But obviously, this isn't this isn't that. But I don't know. I do enjoy like dark stuff where there's not a lot of hope, and we somehow find a way to pull through. So I I, I did like it. Then we got our first dungeon. First thing, uh, immediately I noticed the music. Great. The music has been great so far. Every single song, even like the random battle encounters have been great in this expansion. I have zero complaints for the music at all. Um, it has been amazing, which it's so good. Of course it's amazing. He's, well, he's, he's no Uematsu, but boy, he's damn close to it. So I've, uh, yeah, music, Shadowbringers, great. Um, then I need to remember what we did next. After we did the two split uh, quest lines, we came back here, did the dungeon, uh, fought some enemies. We got introduced to the army of Yulmor with like that bit, that dude with the dragon who pops up every so often, and we have to fight him for a bit. Uh, oh yeah, we also learned that there are several uh, Menphilias that are like reincarnations of her or something, and they keep like there's several of them reincarnated that keep dying but, and with no memories. But so that's why Thancred's keeping this Menphilia we had with us safe, which eventually. Uh, she gets her own identity, becomes Reen, which is great. So, another new, another character with that's been flushed out, and I've really enjoyed uh, Reen and Thancred's growth together throughout the expansion. Just them developing their, their relationship, which was really sweet and good. So, that's something I liked. Uh, we got to the fairy area. We got introduced to the fairies. Uh, Learned more about Light Wardens and whatnot. Got to meet some of the locals, fight our first Light Warden, or not first trial Light Warden, I guess, which was Titania. Uh, we did the extreme trial for that as well. Uh, fun fight. Took us a little bit, but uh, we learned it was really fun on extreme. Normal fight was good. Music, good. Fight, it looked great. It was fun. No complaints there. It was good. I need to think what happened afterwards. After we fought her, 
I need to look, actually. Give me a sec, let me look. So yeah, after we fought Titania, we went to the Greatwood, or the Lahi Zone. Uh, we met with Ustola, we got every, we got all of our friends back, we got to meet the locals there, know what they're dealing with, know what, uh, got to meet their uh, religion, their faith, or whatever, the Put in the Darkness, which was which was cool. Got to learn a bit more about them and how other, just how other parts of the world work and all that, which was nice. We got to meet some of the Viera villages, got to go in some temples, uh, learn a bit more of that. Fought another, did another dungeon, which was good. The boss of the dungeon, though, took a little bit. Uh, this dude right here, or this dungeon, I believe it was this one. This one took a little bit, the boss at least. <laughs> but we got it done. Then after that, uh, I believe we went back to the desert area to try to sneak around uh, Eomor's army. And we repaired some golem, we got to meet some more locals there, learn what they're dealing with, we did some mining. Repaired the golem, fought uh, Ranjit again, and then after that, that's when we kind of had that huge development uh, with Rin, where she... We talked to Midphilia, she gave her like her part of her power to sense the light wardens and whatnot. So that's where that's kind of where she'd be like I think that that's like the big like arc of her character was that part right there of, uh, with Minfilia and Reen where she kind of really came into her own with Thancred and herself. So that was good. We did the dungeon, cool dungeon. Uh, not much to say. And then uh, after that dungeon I have to see again. Let's see. Oh, I forgot! Uh, right, 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 right before the desert. Before the desert, after we did that one uh, temple dungeon. Um, uh, how the fuck could I forget? I completely forgot to talk about Emmett this entire time. Uh, Emmett Selk, where do I begin with him? Um, great villain. Uh, he is very different from the other villains we've had in the game. Because he's with you most of the time. He's talking to you about his plan, or he's just watching you, letting you go on uh, with your day and whatnot, and when he helps, he helps us, but and when he needs to, when we, when we need him to explain something, he really does explain something. Uh, when we get to that one cave, we see the murals on the walls, and we learn a lot about him, his people, Zodiac, Hydaelyn. We learn that they're kind of primals uh, that have been summoned by the wills of them, so that does make sense a lot, in a way. So I do wonder how we're eventually going to resolve that, if what we're, what we're going to do with Zodiac and Hydaelyn and whatnot, because Ascians are still a problem, uh, definitely, they're, they're up to something. We know they're... we okay, because in A Realm Reborn, uh, it's, it's simple enough as they want to cause chaos to bring their god back, as simple as that, but when, when you get the Shadowbringers, it's like... There's, like, their world was destroyed, they want to bring it back, they want to save their people. They get a lot more complex than just mustache-twirling villains, you know what I mean? So, that cutscene does a lot to flush out the Asians and establish them as their own, kind of, their own people, other than just these faceless villains, which I liked. And it really helped that Emmett was there to help uh, explain it, because... He's very charismatic. I like every every second we were with him, I was smiling just for how funny he is to be around. So, and that was that was lots of fun being with him. Uh, but back to where we were. Uh, we fought the dungeon, and then after we did the desert area, we uh, let me see here once again. Right, we prepared to fight uh, Vothri. We took care of that Light Warden there, so there was only one left, and that was the one in Calusia. so... We had to head back there, Storm, uh, Storm Yulmore, which we discovered, which... And after after enough hints, I kind of figured out that Vothri was the Light Warden and whatnot, just knowing he had control over Sin Eaters, so it, it made sense, so... We went on this big adventure to make a giant rock golem to grab onto... A mountain that we got to scale and climb up which was sick. The dungeon was cool. I'm a bit disappointed the dungeon didn't have the classic OG Mount Gold music but you can't win every time but dungeon was cool. The boss of the dungeon was cool. Vothri was a cool fight uh, with two phases. We actually fought him extreme yesterday and beat him no problem but other than that it was a, a cool looking fight. The boss model was insane looking so oh, I also forgot. <laughs> I keep forgetting to bring up things. After we killed the Light Warden in uh, the Great Wood, 
uh, we also learned about ourselves that uh, absorbing all that light from them maybe isn't the best thing for us, because uh, you stole an Uriange, tell us. We are slowly being uh, corrupted by the light, uh, which is no-no, which is no -no, and it finally comes to a head when we defeat Vothri and absorb his light. Uh, it kind of, yeah, we begin to turn, I guess, and then that's when the Exarch uh, chooses to sacrifice himself to save us, and his identity is also revealed that he is uh, Graha, which from the Crystal Tower raids, which thinking about it makes lots of sense. Crystal Tower, he's the Crystal Tower dude, it makes sense that that's the case. And he's kind of, yeah, he went through time and whatnot to save us here or whatever, so he tried to sacrifice himself to save me, but he gets capped by, by Emmett. He doesn't die though, he just gets knocked out by getting shot in the back, I guess? I don't know. Uh, but he doesn't sacrifice himself, so we still got the problem that we're going to turn into a Lightworn, and all the work we did was undone. There was all the light, all the light in the world is back, and everything has gone to shit once again, and now we need to figure out what to do. We need to, I don't know, we need to stop Emmett, pretty much, uh, from his plans to destroy everything and save his world by destroying all the other worlds, and also stopping my light problem which uh, Arbert helps us with, and I forgot to bring up Arbert as well. Uh, Arbert, um, we definitely got hints to Shadowbringers all the way back in uh, post Heavensward with his quest, with like the small quest line with the Warriors of Darkness and whatnot, and dealing with him and his friends, and we learned that his world was devastated, and we figure out that this is his world, and the light problem is because of him, because I guess too much, yeah, too much light with no darkness to balance it out just fucked up the balance and just light took over and destroyed everything. So we, pretty much him and his friends are dead. His friends have all become sin eaters, which in the role quest you resolve those problems. And Arbert is stuck in, I don't know, purgatory here. He is a ghost and only we can talk to him and we kind of, I don't know, we learn more about him. He gets fleshed out. He's become a great character. I really like Ardbert, having him around, he's been he's been fun to just talk with and just learn about the world and just banter with because yeah he's just he's just a bro I like him plus he's a warrior so he gets bonus points for me for that uh, but yeah it's, we also learn yeah so with our with our us becoming a light warden problem uh, Ardbert kind of helps us out because uh, whenever he touches us there's like a flash of light so I think he, I don't think it's exactly, it's directly said, but it's kind of, I don't know, I'm not sure if it's obvious, but I, I, to me at least it felt like that Ardbert uh, is kind of, was left behind to help us because, I don't know, Minfilia knew this would happen, so she left Ardbert to, I don't know, take away the, or to stop the light or something, I think. I'm not, I wasn't 100% sure, but uh, with that set, like with us needing to take care of Emmett and the light problem, uh, we set to go to an underwater city, learned that there was a giant ass underground ancient Asian city underneath it, which is an illusion made by Emmett uh, of his home world or home city right before it was destroyed. So there's like ghosts of the Asians there, which are massive people, by the way. So we talk to them. We learn about yeah, like the calamity that's happening there. The end, the end of their world. Um, we talked to one Asian I know, who has a name and who is, like, not stuck in that part of time, I guess. I think his name was, like, uh, Hiflodeus or whatever. Uh, so I thought it was strange, so I'm not sure if we're somehow gonna see more of them, because it's kind of weird just to bring up one, one named character to give us some exposition and just never show up again. So I expect him to, to appear eventually again i don't know when i don't know how but uh i expect him to show up possibly in the future so we'll have to play and find out and then after all that we get to the capital of the city amarat we go through the dungeon which was crazy it's like the and it's literally the end of the world uh as the dungeon and like everything's burning everything's dying there's like cosmic entities or cosmic horrors like lovecraft shit which i loved and then by the end of it all, we get to Emmett, the final boss, uh, Hades, great fight, great music, 
we all are we all team up together or me and Ardbert like group together or merge we take him out and after killing Emmett uh, so he is now dead the world is saved everyone is happy the exarch is alive and with the post credit scenes we see that um, uh, Xenos is well we knew he was alive still but he's got his body back Elidibus ran away he's back in his normal white robes uh, Xenos kills the Emperor which I didn't expect uh, but I guess any, anyone who gets in his way to fight me must die so uh, I'm assuming these patches are gonna build up to that and eventually in Endwalker we're gonna probably gonna get to fighting Xenos again which I'm looking forward to so I hope, I just hope Astinian and Gaius are okay. So that's just my hopes for the end of it. So I'm expecting, I'm expecting the post patches in here to resolve whatever's going on in the first here in Norvarent. And then the second half of the post Shadowbringers patches will begin to set up everything, or begin to set everything in motion uh, for Endwalker, which I will be looking forward to. And with all that said, uh, I really enjoyed all of it. Uh, some parts were, eh, didn't really, didn't really, I didn't really care for that much. It was mostly some of the lighthearted stuff, which, I don't know, I said earlier, I enjoyed, like, the, the dark, the dark stuff of it. Like, the, you know, like, the despair of it or whatever, or, like, the hopelessness. So when there, well, obviously when there was a lighthearted moment, it was nice to, to kind of break it up, but... I don't know, it kind of felt a bit sad for me, but other than that, it was great. We got to learn, it was a lot of, like, lore in this expansion to talk about or to go over and come over. I probably haven't even begun, I probably haven't even, like, gone over it all yet, but there was a lot. Uh, but so far, everything, everything I've done, uh, great. Let me think here. If I go back and think of Heaven's Word, like, just 3.0, not the post patches, I'm not going to compare... The, the expansion as a whole to just the base patch of the, the expansion. So 3.0 Heaven's Word compared to this. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. A, a lot of because a lot of uh, Heaven's Word was new characters with like Ishgard and whatnot, and I really enjoyed those characters. Like Estinian is one of my favorite characters. Emmerich is one of my favorite characters, and yeah, I don't know. I. I, don't, I can't say one is better than the other yet. I've, I like Heaven's Word for its own reasons, like for the characters and the storytelling. And I also like uh, uh, Shadowbringers for this, uh, for the, the, I don't know, storytelling, the lore, the world, world building. So it's hard to compare the two. I, I like them both. They're both great. Um, also, um, well, the storm. Okay, the so uh, 4 4.0 4.0 Stormblood was good, but the the post patches of Stormblood really put that expansion on the map. So, comparing just the base patches, the, uh, Shadowbringers and Heaven's Word are obviously better than base Stormblood, but the patches for Stormblood really put it up there. So, I need to play through the patch uh, the patches of this to get my final opinion on everything. For it, uh, then, then I can compare it to uh, all of Heaven's Word and all of Stormblood. But all that said, it was great. The story was great. Characters were great. Music was great. World was great. Dungeons were great. Bosses were amazing. Uh, did I say music? Music, amazing. I love the music in this expansion. It's great so far. The twinning, amazing masterpiece. Um, with all that said. I'm not sure there is much else to say about the story. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think that's kind of all I got wanted to get off my chest about the story of this. And I think uh, I got well, I got my thoughts out there. You know what I think about this all. And obviously, we'll do this again. Ooh, excuse me. Yeah, we'll do this again uh, after we finish all the patches for this before we get into Endwalker. I'll give another discussion of what I think, and we'll see how it compares to the other expansions of the game. Uh, but yeah, that is my thoughts on Shadowbringers. Um, this is probably this, this is 100% going on YouTube, so 
Uh, this is for the YouTube people. Uh, if you enjoyed the video and you cared about my thoughts, uh, there is a link to my stream in the description of the YouTube. So you can join that, or you can click it, follow me there, where I'll be streaming this game, and you can get these first-hand reactions live, other than uh, instead of through a video on YouTube. Know what I mean? Uh, but that's it for YouTube.